Hi there and welcome to a little video to introduce you to our brand new stencil line. They are called Decorative Collage Quilting Stencils, where you can create endless combinations of stunning motifs and designs that are unique every single time. This is going to be a fantastic way to turn your doodles into quilted masterpieces. Now I'm going to show you um, a few of our stencils. I'm going to use three to make a feather design for you right now. There are 18 stencils in the entire line and I will show you each one of them. Right now I'm going to show you the Paisley stencils which we use to make feathers. There is one page, two page, these are a little bit thinner, and then we're going to add some detail with using these decorative curls in our feathers as well. This is probably one of the uh, things that quilters want to learn how to draw and quilt the most, so that's why I'm starting with how to draw feathers. The better and the more you draw them, the more you practice them, you create better muscle memory and better flow when you're quilting. So it's really important if you're going to practice, you practice the right shape. So here's how you make it. Now, just a little bit of word about our stencils before we begin. As you can see, they look a little bit tinted in this light, but when I hold it up, you can see they are 100% clear. That is very, very important. We tested out several different kinds of plastic when we were designing these stencils and working with them. And what we found is, is the thicker that the stencil got, the uh, less see-through it was, the less clear it was. And so we decided that we needed to have that clarity. And I'll show you why that's important in just a moment here. So we're going to start by just making a very simple, soft S wave. That I'm sure everybody can manage. That's the only thing that you have to draw freehand at all. And we're going to make a really pretty feather from this very simple hand drawn wave. Okay. So we're going to take the smallest feather on this page here and they can, they increase as you can see just ever so slightly as we go. And now here's where the visibility is important. I can move and rotate this sheet to have that feather sitting exactly how I want it on this spine. And when you've got it in the position that you want, laying just so, you can just keep moving it until you're happy with it, then all you're gonna do is trace it out. All you're gonna do is just trace out that feather. So this is our first teardrop. People tell you to just add a teardrop and then add feathers to that. There's our first feather right there and how simple was that? Then I'm just gonna rotate this sheet slightly and line up this corner of the back of the feather, the new feather that I'm going to stitch, I'm lining that up with the spine, and then I'm overlapping it slightly on top of the previous feather that we stitched, so that our feathers, look, or we, that we drew, not stitched, so that our feathers look nice and nested. Here and here is our second feather, okay? Now we're going to go and rotate this again and we're going to add another feather but this time it's going to be a little bit bigger. You can do some of the same size feathers for a while if you want. Depends on the look that you want to create. This is 100% customizable every single time. I'm going to increase the size of my feather and just just trace that out. As you can see we've got a beautiful line of feathers starting right here. Now I'm going to rotate it around and I can still see exactly what's going on underneath and I'm going to put another feather right here. And you just move this template around until you get it exactly where you want it. Look at this beautiful line of feathers starting already. Now I think we should add a little bit of flair into there by putting in a curl or a swirl. So let's take a look at our curl sheet. There's lots to choose from in different sizes. You can also flip the sheet completely over so that you can have a mirror image depending on what direction you want that curl to go. So let's say for example if I wanted this curl to go right here, I can see fully still underneath exactly what that looks like. I love how clear that is. I think that one's just a slight bit too big. So we're going to audition another one and I think this one fits a little bit better. Don't you agree? So we're going to line this up so that this line right here just grazes the previous feather that we stitched. And don't worry about this bottom section, how it's kind of coming into here. We'll edit that afterwards. So one of the things here's here's the only catch with these stencils is because there's a little bit thinner than 
some of the thicker stencils out there on the market that you can't see through is you will have to place a finger on some of these smaller detail areas so that they stay in place while you're drawing around them. Mind you, any stencil is going to have some movement when there's that much cut out around it, but these ones just have a little bit more because we wanted to have the clarity in these sheets. So just place your finger on it as you draw around it and you will be just fine, just like so and then it doesn't move. You'll have to put your finger on the other side to complete and just draw around. There we go. You connect that side and down we go. Now when we get down to the bottom here, I'm going to just rotate this slightly so that I can get a nice smooth line all the way in. Now you can freehand that if you want to but if you're not comfortable with any kind of freehand drawing, then you can just move the sheet around to get where you want it. Nice thing about sketching these out in pencil first is that you get to erase any boo-boos. So just like I did there, you can erase it so that when you go to take this design and transfer it onto your fabric, which I'll show you in another video, then it is just the way you want it to be. Now going back to our feathers, that one looks a little bit too big. So I'm just going to rotate this and pick which feather do I think looks most pleasing in that spot. And I think it's this one. That's what I love about this is you're not, if you're not sure, you can just rotate it and you'll recognize it as soon as you see it and you go, yep, that's the one. And you get that from studying pictures of feathers in quilts that you love. That's as easy it is as it is. So I'm going to use the same one again, moved over just slightly and rotated just slightly to add another feather. And then I'm going to start coming a little bit smaller back down to this side. And so I'm going to rotate to one that's slightly smaller next to it. Simple as that. Rotate again until you find that next size feather that you want to put in there. I think this is so pretty that I really want to stitch it out. And the nice thing is, is I can put this in any place, in any shape, on any quilt I want because it's 100% customizable. One more. And I think I'll do one more at this size because then the next one is our smallest one. And then I'll just pop this around one more time. And put our last feather right there. Now you could do the exact same thing on the other side. Isn't that pretty? You could make a double spine if you wanted. And then start at the bottom. Flip the page over so you have a mirror image. You can make it exactly the same or slightly different if you wanted to. There's our first teardrop. And then start building the feather on the other side. These are the easiest designs to draw because the shape is already made for you. You could fit them in a triangle. You could fit them in a trapezoid. All those Judy Niemeyer quilts that have those odd shapes that you want to put feathers in, just draw out the shape and you can fit them anywhere. So let me take you through all 18 stencils. We have the first of these feathers that I was just using. The next sheet of feathers is a little bit slimmer. These are a little bit more elegant, pretty feathers. You can use these for paisley shapes as well in your quilting and decorate them. Here is the curls sheet that we just finished using. Okay, along in that set comes a set of florals. So you get some flowers to play with. There is not just one sheet of flowers, but there's a second sheet of flowers. And then also a third sheet of kind of a flower star with some onion shapes that you can use to tuck in between the petals and you have them in all different sizes. So really you can customize all different sizes of quilt blocks, four inches, six inches, eight inches, 10 inches. Then we've got a set of very basic stencils that are for the geometric shapes that you'll add into your spaces. This is awesome for just crazy doodle drawing. And then if you want to turn it into a um, marking for a quilt, you can. So we have circles, 
And then we've got squares. These all go up on even measurements um, in increments so that they match your quilting rulers and the block sizes that you have and most block sizes. There's some ovals, there's some nice thick fat ones and some pretty slender ovals. Then we've got some triangle shapes even hexagons that you can use for creating English pa uh, paper piecing templates if you so wish. And then one of my favorite geometrics is this Argyle slash uh, diamond set. And I'm gonna show you something really cool that you can make with these diamonds. They are awesome in borders. And then lastly, we have another set of some really pretty eccentric kind of fun. Uh, here are, there are two pages of jewel shapes. So we've got teardrops and ovals with points, lots of lovely shapes. We've got rectangles with curved ends, curved corners. So there's the first page. Here's the second page. We even got some diamond shapes in there. I just love those. And then filigree. These look fantastic in corners of borders and in setting triangles because you can add more curls from the other sheets to embellish them and add more detail. Here's another sheet of filigree. They're awesome. And then probably my personal favorite coming up at the very end, we had to throw in some steampunk gears into there. So we've got two pages of steampunk gears. Here's the first page. And then the second page of gears. I think these are my favorite. I can't wait to use them even more. So there you go. That's the full lineup of all 18 stencils. And if you head over to our website at www.loveshackquilts.com or .ca, you can get yourself a set of these awesome stencils and start using them to create some.